Part 5 Life Beyond Corporate A Startup Bug and Life Launching a new business is not an easy task. You have to give up the ease of regular income to explore into the unknown and unpredictable abyss. There are a lot of things that keep us away from making the leap like fear and insecurity. But the one thing above all, the rest is motivation. Once you have decided to take a chance, then A. Focus on commitment, not motivation. How important is your goal for you? And what are you willing to sacrifice in order to achieve it? How dedicated are you towards your goal? If you find yourself fully committed, motivation will automatically follow. B. Don't seek results, seek knowledge. If you focus on the excitement of discovery by improving, experimenting and exploring, your motivation will always be driven. Don't focus only on the results. If you do so, your motivation will be like a seasonal weather. It will die the minute it hits a storm. So the key is to an emphasis on the journey, not the destination. Keep thinking about what you are learning along the way and what you can improve. C. Make the journey fun. It is an amazing game. The minute you make it serious, there is a sure short chance that it will start carrying a heavy emotional weight and you will lose the perspective and find yourself stuck again. D. Get rid of stagnating thoughts. Thoughts influence feelings and feelings determine how you view your work. You have a lot of thoughts in your head and you always have a choice about which one to focus on. The ones that will move you forward. Excitement, experimenting, trying new things, stepping out of your comfort zone or the ones that will make you emotionally trapped. Fears, doubts. E. Use your imagination. Next step after getting rid of negative thoughts is to use your imagination. When things go well, you are full of positive energy. And when you are experiencing difficulties, you need to be even more energetic. Just think that if you keep repeating, I am not able to do my work or not able to get a job done from others, guess which feeling those words will evoke. It's a matter of imagination. F. Stop being nice to yourself. Motivation means action and action brings results. Sometimes your actions fail to produce the desired results. So you wish to be nice to yourself and not put yourself in a difficult situation? You wait for the perfect timing for an opportunity while you drive yourself into stagnation and sometimes even into depression. Get out there, dare yourself and do something that you want to do even if you are afraid. G. Get rid of distractions. Meaningless things and distractions will always be in your way, especially those easy and usual things you would rather do instead of focusing on new challenging and meaningful projects. Focus on what is the most essential. Write a list of time wasters and hold yourself accountable for not completing them. H. Don't rely on others. You should never think others can do things for you, not even your family, your boss, your partner or your friends. They all are busy with their own needs and in their own world. No one will make you happy by achieving your goals for you. It is all on you. I Plan Know your three steps forward. You don't need more. But you definitely need this. Fill out your weekly calendar with when you will do what and how. When, what, how is very important to schedule. Review how each day went by. What you learn and revise what you could improve. 
J. Protect yourself from burnout. It is easy to burn out when you are very motivated. Observe yourself to recognize the signs of tiredness and take a time to rest. Your mind and body rest when you plan relaxation and fun time into your monthly calendar. Do diverse tasks. Keep switching between something logical and creative, something still and physical, working with a team or alone, switch whereabouts, meditate or just take a deep breath, close your eyes and focus on one thing for 5 minutes. Transformation from manager to an entrepreneur. Analysis through leadership traits. Having a great idea and gathering a team to bring that idea to life is the first step of creating a successful business venture. While finding a new and unique idea is rare enough, the ability to successfully execute this idea is what differentiates dreamers from entrepreneurs. The day you make your first hire, you have taken the first step towards being an influential leader. When the situation is tough, when money is tight and startup fundraising is needed, stress levels are high. The vision of instant success doesn't happen as per your wish. It is easy to lose control at that time. Calm yourself down. Take a deep breath and relax. Few startup leadership qualities come traits which every entrepreneur should possess. Morality or ethical behavior. Your employees and your business are a reflection of yourself. And if you make morality and ethical conduct a key value, your team will follow the suit. Whatever moral level you hold yourself to, it is important to raise the bar even higher when you are responsible for a team. Self-confidences There may be days when you face the challenging situation in your new business. Things are not going according to your plan. This goes with any business, small or large. And the most important job as a leader for you is to put fires and maintain team moral without being panicked. Keep up your confidence level and assure everyone that setbacks are natural and the important thing is to focus on the larger goal. As a leader, staying calm and confident will help the team feel the same. Must remember, your team will take cues from you. So if you display a level of maturity and calm during damage control, your team will pick up the same feeling. Commitment If you expect your team to work hard and produce quality content, you need to lead by example. There is no greater motivation than seeing the boss down in trenches working alongside everyone else. Showing that hard work is being done on every level and by providing your commitment to your role and your organization, you not only earn respect from your team but also instill that same hardworking energy among them. You have to show your commitment not only to your work at hand but also to your promise. As for example, if you pledge to host a holiday party or uphold summer Fridays, keep your word. Once you have gained the respect of your team, they are more likely to deliver the peak amount of quality work possible. Intuition When leading a new team through uncharted waters, there is no roadmap on what to do. Everything is uncertain and higher the risk, higher the pressure. That is where your natural intuition has to kick in. Managing your team through the process of your day. Nowadays, tasks can be done through technology. But when something unforeseen happens, 
or you are thrown into a new scenario, your team will look to you for direction or guidance. You will need to depend on your gut instinct for an answer. This is also like learning to trust yourself. Learning to trust yourself is as important as your team learning to trust you. Creativity Sometimes some decisions will not always be so clear-cut. You may be forced at times to deviate from your set source and make an on-the-fly decision. This is where your creativity will prove to be important. During critical situations, your team will look up to you for your direction. And you may be forced to take quick decisions. Sometimes it is very easy to choose which of the two bad choices is the best option. Don't jump into conclusions. Quickly out of the box thinking is must for a leader to lead. Don't pick the first easier option. Give these issues some thought and even turn to your team for guidance by utilizing all possible alternatives before making a rash decision. You can typically reach the end conclusion you are aiming for. Approach Not all of us are same. A basic concept. But sometimes that is often overlooked. We have language barriers, cultural perspectives, different educational backgrounds, personality traits and varying value systems with which individuals come preconditioned that significantly affect how information is processed and interpreted. Some people work well under pressure, others don't. An MBA professional knows this better than others. Some respond best to tough love. Others take it personally and shut down. To become an effective leader, you must have the ability to customize your approach to person-to-person -person basis. Based on the situation in hand, your capacity to perform this concept will play a huge role in your ability to get the best work out of your team and other partners along the journey. Communication Knowing what you want to be accomplished may seem clear in your head, but if you try to describe it to somebody else and you are met with the blank expressions, then there is a problem. With this experience, you may then want to focus on honing your communication skills. If you can't relate your vision to your team, you won't be able to work towards the same goal. Being able to clearly describe what you want to be done is very significant. Training new members and creating productive work environment all depend upon healthy lines of communication. Your team will learn to trust and depend on you and will be less hesitant to work harder only if you form an open door policy to your office or making a point to talk to your team member or staff on daily basis. Making yourself available to discuss the inter-office issue is extremely vital. As for example, if your website crashes, you are going to lose major clientele or your funding dries up. In short, your organization is in deep trouble. Then guiding your team through the process without panicking is as challenging as it is important. It is your job as a team leader to implant positive energy. That's where your sense of humor finally pays off. Encourage your team to laugh at the mistakes instead of crying. Moral is directly linked to productivity. If you always learn to find humor in tough times, your work environment will become a happy and healthy space where your employees look forward to work happily. Be friendly with your team and make it a point to crack jokes with your team and encourage personal discussions of weekend plans or trips. These small steps keep productivity levels high and moral even higher at the workplace. Motivate Creating a business often involves a bit of forecasting. Predominantly, in the beginning stages of a startup, 
Encouraging your team to see the vision of success to come is vital. You need to make your team feel invested in the accomplishments of the company. Whether you operate on bonus system or everyone knows a piece of equity. Generating enthusiasm for hard work you are all putting is so important. Being able to motivate your team is great for focusing on the future goals. But it is also significant for the current issues. Acknowledge the work that everyone has performed and commend the team on each of their efforts, recognizing their needs of a break from work. It is your job to keep spirits up. Delegate or trusting your team. Finessing your brand vision is vital to creating an efficient and organized business. But to progress to the next stage, you need to learn to trust your team with that vision. The T to delegation is identifying the strengths of each team member and capitalizing on them. You have to find out what each team members enjoy doing most. If they find their task enjoyable, they will likely to put more thought and effort behind it. This will establish your trust and belief in your team. Please remember that trusting your team with your idea is a sign of strength, not weakness. As your business grows, delegating the task to appropriate departments are one of the most important skills you can develop. With increasing workload, the more you stretch yourself thin, the lower the quality of your work will become and less you will produce. It's a delicate balance, but one that will have an enormous impact on the productivity of your business. Positive attitude. Your attitude plays a very vital role to keep motivating your team towards the continued success of the company and keeping the energy level up. You must not forget that everyone in your team is a person for keeping the energy level up. You can do anything whether that means providing snacks, coffee, relationship advice or even just occasional beer in the office. If your team feels upbeat and happy, chances are they don't mind stretching extra hours or finishing a report or meeting the deadline. Starting business Starting a business is risky, but depend on chance too. Uncertainty is an ever-present, but manageable part of the business. Risks can be minimized by successfully creating a business plan. You must create a perfect business plan before you start a full-fledged business. A return plan is less important to understand the critical job of your business. No matter how well you prepare, there will always be surprise along the way. You must raise large amounts of capital before you start building your business and be ready for surprises. ABCD of every successful business A. Creates or provides something of value that B. Other people want or need C. At a price they are willing to pay in a way that d satisfies the purchaser's needs and expectations and e provides the business sufficient income to make it valuable for the owners to continue operation take away any of these things value creation customer demand transactions value delivery or profit sufficiency and you have something other than a business each factor is both essential and universal. As you deconstruct each of these factors, you will find additional universal requirements. The value can't be created without understanding what people want. Market research Attracting customers first requires getting their attention. Customer satisfaction depends on unfailingly exceeding the customer's expectations. Customer service. Profit sufficiency requires bringing in more money than is spent. Finance. 
None of these functions are very difficult to understand, but they are always required, no matter what business you are in or what you are. Do them well and your business flourishes. Do them below par and you won't be in business for very long. People and System Fundamentally, every business relies on two additional factors, people and systems. Every business is created by people and survives by benefiting other people in some way. To understand how business work, you must have a firm understanding of how people tend to think and behave, how humans make decisions, act on their decisions and communicate with others. On the other hand, systems are the invisible structures that hold every business together. At the core, every business is a collection of processes that can be continuously repeated to produce a better result. By understanding the nitty gritty of how complex systems work, whether you are dealing with an advertising campaign, marketing campaign or anything. Now it comes to money inflow. Money inflow. Whatever we want in life has a price connected to it. If we want to make things better, there is a price to pay. Or even we leave things as they are, we have to pay price. A price for everything. Money inflow is a key factor. For running a business, creating value, marketing, selling and delivering value, there is money flowing in and out of the business every day. In order to exist, every business must bring in sufficient revenue to justify all the time and effort that goes into running a day-to-day -day operations. Everyone has bills to pay, household groceries to buy, houses to run. So the people involved in business need to consistently make enough money to justify the time and energy that they are investing or else they will quit and do something else. So every successful business must bring in a certain amount of money to keep going. It is important to have enough cash to pay your people till your customers start paying you. How to know fund and cash gap? Take one single spreadsheet. Mark the months out in columns. Take it out some 18 to 36 months. In the rows, start by listing every single estimated expense in the month you make that payment. Every single month's salary, travel, tea, coffee, future hires, raises, every single thing you can think of. Sum these up in every column. These are your total estimated costs for that month. Once you come to the end of this, then start listing the estimated revenues from all the work you are doing in the month. The revenue hits the bank. Guess whatever you can. For a media business, estimated page views, ad fill rate, 90 day credit cycles, whatever. For an e-com business, leakage, conversions, credit card payment collection, everything you can. For a B2B, count the number of calls it will take to get an appointment, the number of meetings to turn it to an active lead, the total time to turn that into a sale and the time it takes to turn that sales into the first check and so on. And yes, be conservative. Sum this up in every month's column. It will likely to start with zero, but these are your total estimated revenues every month. Now, do the rest. Revenues minus rest costs row. This may be likely to start with a negative number. And as you go towards the right, the negative will probably reduce till a point when the number becomes positive. Call this the cash gap another row which does accumulative of every month's cash gap. This number will keep rising at one point it will hit a peak and then descend as you go right onto your spreadsheet. This peak cash need is the amount of money at the every least 
that you need to have. Just to be safe, add 3 to 6 months more of the projected cost. Go get that amount of money from somewhere or figure out how you can get that money. Then start. You will radically reduce your chances of failing. Big learning. The fundamentals are fundamental. Subsequently, every business must capture some amount of value it creates as revenue, which can be used to pay expenses and remunerate the people who make the businesses run. The very best business create a virtuous cycle. They create huge amounts of value while keeping their expenses consistently low so that they can make more than enough money to keep going without capturing too much value. Believe it or not, there are only four ways to increase your business revenue. Increase the average size of each deal by selling more. Increase the frequency of transactions per customer. Increase the number of clients you serve. Increase your prices. IMTE of startups based on an Indian scenario. A startup is typically called as a new venture in a high-tech area. Again, this is a very inadequate definition of a startup. The sad part of startups in India is that typically most startups are founded by students right after college or young professionals who usually sacrifice their career, earnings, personal life and professional aspirations to create something which is in vast majority of cases fails.